Hello, and welcome to No Man's Sky. I am Alon Paul, as many of you are aware, and we're doing an interesting video today. We're going to do a video specifically about Quicksilver. So I was posed with the question of, in regards to Quicksilver, and I'm just going to paraphrase or put it in my own words at this point, in regards to the purpose of it, um, what to purchase with it, suggestions that is to new players, and what content is available for purchase and what that content entails. Basically, is that content worth it? Is it worth getting? Um, it was also asked as to whether the content would disappear from the store before you were able to get it, things like that. So let's get started. First of all, I'm, as you can see, I'm in a space station at the moment. Let me just jump in a ship. We're gonna head over to the anomaly as we speak. And we'll take a look at the Quicksilver store. There we go. So let's go over the Quicksilver. Now Quicksilver, if you're going through your very first gameplay, and you'll notice that in certain missions as you're going through it at the very beginning, and you can go through several of my playthroughs that I've done, at the very beginning, you are occasionally asked to come here to the anomaly to report to Nada and Polo. And it's part of the quest line. And But one of the rewards that Nada gives you is he gives you about 150 Quicksilver every single time you visit him. I believe it's 150. Pretty sure it's 150. It could have been 120, but I'm pretty sure it's 150. So you go up there and you visit Nada and Polo and you discuss it with them. Um, he gives you 150 Quicksilver and you leave. And as time goes by, you build up a good supply of Quicksilver, usually several hundred uh, easily if you paid close attention to the missions. That's fine. What can you do with that Quicksilver? Well, before we get moving along, let's talk about what that Quicksilver is. So if we go into my inventory and you look up here at the top, you're going to see I have about 40, almost 47,000 Quicksilver. That will definitely be 47,000 by the end of today because today happens to be Friday, even though the mission isn't available yet in the Nexus. So this little guy in the middle of the Nexus, as we all know, right near the landing platforms, is considered the Nexus. And inside the Nexus, we have missions. And we have usually just regular ordinary missions like these three down here, which give you certain rewards. Like this one gives you batteries and gives you some nanites. A lot of them will give you nanites. You can also get a walker brain without actually fighting, or at least that's what you would think, without actually fighting any sentinels. But it'll send you to a sentinel pillar where you can immediately shut them down without fighting the sentinels. So that makes things a little bit easier if you want to get yourself a walker brain. Walker brains are needed to build certain things. So some of these uh, things that they give you, the rewards, are very handy. So it's good to go through here and go through these missions. These three missions at the bottom are constantly replenished. Constantly. So as you do one, another one will appear at its place. Uh, and they will change throughout the day. Usually within a few hours, they'll change to another type of mission anyway. The one at the top here, you'll notice, has a quick silver uh, prize that comes with it that is very handy you can get 400 quicksilver for doing these now if you look closely you'll notice it has this little emblem in here indicating it's a quicksilver reward now if we take a quick look at the side of our nexus as you've already seen floating there i've got three of these um loading holograms that indicate there are three missions available to me to do quicksilver now you can only get them at one at a time that's perfectly fine but once you've completed one one of those icons disappear now, if you're brand new to the game and you just started, the first time you visit the Nexus, if you are as thorough as the rest of us are and you can't stop playing the game, usually the first time, within the first day that you come here, there'll only be one icon floating there. If you don't do that mission and you continue on throughout that and you come back, say, the next day, you'll have a second icon floating up there. And if you come back a third day, you'll have the third icon floating there. That's all great and dandy. And as you go through those missions through the day, they'll disappear. The next day you come back, and I mean physically the next day in real time, one of those icons will reappear and you'll have access to those Quicksilver missions. So you can get as many as 400 Quicksilver per day, sometimes up to 1,200 if you let it go for a few days. But it's still 400 Quicksilver a day. 
The difference is, is that you get a secondary icon, which you'll see later in my, my anomaly weekend mission updates that appear every Friday. You'll see an icon float above the nexus. That icon indicates that we have a special weekend mission available that you can do one time and one time only per character that you've made, per save, if you will. And that will allow you to pick up a good amount of Quicksilver. Uh, and right off the top of my head, I can't actually remember how much it is anymore. Uh, I believe it is either 1,200, 1,500, or 1,800 Quicksilver. Sometimes it does vary, depends upon... Uh, they've had occasions where they've given extra depending upon what's available in the Quicksilver store. Finally, there is a third icon, which is not appearing on here, when a special Quicksilver, uh, not Quicksilver, but a special mission appears in the Nexus, it appears on the left-hand side uh, as a floating icon. And if we happen to see that later, I'll show it to you. Now, what do we spend our Quicksilver on? Let's take a close look at what's inside the Quicksilver store. So our Quicksilver vendor is right here. And you'll see we have four options. We can create exotic items from Quicksilver. These are items that have been made available to everybody, to the general populace, to all of us, in order to be able to get any items we want. As you can see, there's a universe, universal community research progress that as we ac accomplish missions at, at the Nexus, these items become available to us. As you can see, I've already owned a bunch of these. But they are mostly, if you look very, very closely at them, cosmetic, decals, jetpack trails. They have nothing to do. If you have a scorching jetpack trail, it doesn't mean that when you take off, you burn people behind you. It just is a facade, a view. That's all. But you'll notice as you go through these, all of them are cosmetic. Special capes, if you like to have a special cape. Signs, which... As you may know or may not know, through glitch building, you can really make these things into something very, very special. And as you go through, you'll see closely posters, capes, items that you can put in your base. You see, I don't even have all of these items. Um, I can probably go through and purchase a whole bunch of them if I wish. But as you may or may not know, I am not exactly a builder. A lot of people, I, I leave that to more advanced individuals. Uh, there are freighter trails. There are more other items in here. And you can get some other things. Like there are some uh, bite beat chips that you can get as well that, so that you can play music at your base. You have fireworks that you can get. Again, cosmetic but visual. Um, you can get titles, which I don't have the title Volcanic or Swamp Dweller, which I'm going to go ahead and get them now because I'm a big collector of titles. Um, the Myth Beacon, which is going to be constantly available. See, there's a thousand of them available. Nobody really knows what this does. Let's keep going. You have other cosmetic things that are available for your companion that you have. Yes, you can have a pet, and those pets can have items added to them depending upon the pet. Again, here's more cosmetics, more titles. We'll just keep going through here until we find something that is actually going to help us. More titles? Oh my gosh, I missed out on a whole bunch of titles. We're going to get them. There we go. Moving on. See? Ugh. I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed. Figurines for your starship. Now, these are the first things that you're going to come across. You have the Artemis figurine. As you know, you're going through the Artemis storyline if you're a new player. The Apollo figurine. Null figurine. And there are others, too. These actually do have an impact on your ship when you place them on your ship. And you'll notice that if I go to my ship right now, into my ship inventory, you'll see up here that I have these figurines in here. They all add something to our overall ratings for our ship. For instance, if I remove the Artemis figurine right now, watch closely to my hyperdrive range, maneuverability, shield strength, and damage potential on the top right. I take that, put it down here. Hold up. Got to do it the other way. X. You see my maneuverability just dropped. It's not a huge amount, but it is significant enough that it makes a difference. Same thing with these. Like the Atlas figurine, watch closely. See my hyperdrive range just dropped. So these do have an effect on your ship. So it's good to get these and set them up on your ship in your technology slots when you have the availability in your ship to do so. When you have the slots opened up. Um, no use in doing it because it's not as much of an impact early on game, 
Uh, you're better off getting upgrades for your hyperdrive and things like that in order to get what you need. But for now, that's what you know that these things can do, right? Back to our Quicksilver Companion. Going back to those same items. I'm going to go down this list a little ways. So there's the figurine. So that's about the first thing you'll run across that actually does have an actual impact on your person. Again, you can get different backpacks. More items, more items, more items as we keep going through. You can get different visual appearances on your character. As far as facial appearances, I don't have all of them, obviously. I haven't really gone into that. And then you get into these. Now, a lot of folks wondered about the armored shoulder pads, chest piece, leggings, exo gloves, the armored boots, and the battle masks that you can get. Does that have any impact on your character in regards to um, your fighting ability, your defense, things like that? The answer is no. It has absolutely no impact whatsoever on your character other than being, other than having a visual appearance change. And that's it. They're expensive. I would suggest that you go for other things like the um, figurines for your ship, like Nada, Polo. Get those for your ship. Those are a little more worthwhile and have an impact on you. But these are just cosmetic, and if you like the cosmetics, do it. I love the cosmetics personally, and I will continue to do so. I've got a lot of things in here I'd like to get, including some of these uh, unlockable gestures and poses that you can give yourself, and the fireworks that you can get for yourself, things like that. So, moving on. Hmm, I didn't even got that one. We're going to have to get it. I'm going through Quicksilver like crazy today, huh? See, statues are not going to really have anything, any, any effect. Again, same thing. Yeah, you're going to see me keep doing that every now and then. More decals, more trees, Diplo statues. Again, all of these are cosmetic for the most part. And there we go. And that's all of them. So that is what you get in the main store. Now, you'll notice that there was other options in here. For instance, where to earn Quicksilver. So it gives us that and will tell us in a very nice manner. A new Quicksilver mission is available at the Nexus every day, up to a maximum stack of three. We've already covered that, including weekend events, which generate significant additional Quicksilver. You can sometimes get Quicksilver and other methods in creatures that you meet in space, certain types of, like when you're flying along in Pulse Drive and you get a message saying that there is an object in space to look at. Pay attention to the message as it clearly indicates whether it's going to be someone or something. And it's the some things that you want to try to check out. Because sometimes they're dangerous and other, very, very little of them are dangerous. But most of them will usually give you something. And some of those lattices and things like that that are out there, when you take them, when you shoot them, they will give you Quicksilver sometimes. So it's another way of getting Quicksilver. You also have your Expedition Awards and your Twitch Rewards. Now, as you all know, we just had a redux of Expeditions recently in December. Um, those Expeditions come out three to four of those a year. And they have an Expedition. There will be probably one coming up here in February. Uh, another one usually around the, the late May, early June time frame. There's usually another one around the August time frame. And if we're fortunate, there'll be another one sometime in late October, early November. Uh, around that time frame. And then we get four expeditions. And then they redo them in December for those who miss them. For like a week or two. So, or a few weeks, I should say, for almost a month. So that gives us the opportunity to collect special rewards from the expeditions. Well, how long are they available? They are available forever. So, for instance, here's all the items I can get if I wish. I wasn't interested in some of these, so I didn't get them. But you'll notice that I have very few that I haven't gotten. For instance, if I go to the top menu up here and I scroll through the expeditions that have been here. Appearances, starships, companions, other curiosities, not owned. You'll see I've only got four pages of not owned. But I previously collected this on another run. So while I own them, I have it previously collected. So I can get those. So you have your you have fireworks again, you have other things in here, but you can also get companions. Do the companions do anything for you? For the most part, no. Most of the companions just float around you and they join you in, on your quests and travels on planets and you can make them appear and disappear, things like that. But there are certain companions, for instance, um, if I can show you that. 
There are certain flying companions. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. There we go, all items. There are certain flying companions that you can get that will allow you, and you can get them as pets and stuff like that, that will allow you to fly on them. You can actually mount those companions and ride them around. Uh, they can get you places quicker and sometimes much, much slower. So be careful. But the flying ones are usually the better ones to go with, uh, as some of the uh, land-based ones are not nearly as quick as the flying ones. The beetles are probably your fastest, just to give you a rough idea. To give you an eye of those beetles, I think I can show you one right now. Yep, there he is right there. So that flying companion right there, you can actually ride them. And they are probably the fastest ones in that, that are out there now. And allows you to go ahead and... See, I can't ride them in here, but I can ride them normally. And I can, get, I can pat them, treat them. You can talk to them a little bit. They can wear accessories if they're available to do so. And you can induce an egg to get a new one. And that egg you can take elsewhere to do other things. But we're not going to get into that. That's regarding pets. And I'm not going to get into too many pets right now. So let's go ahead and dismiss him. Gone. So that's what you can get from here. Do those particular expedition rewards ever disappear? The answer is no. They'll always be in here. But once you've collected them for this character, you will always have them. They will also always be available to every new save you start. Keep that in mind. So if you get done with the main storyline on your first run through and you decide you want to get these items on a new save at the first time you visit the anomaly, you can come here and collect them. You won't have to pay them, pay for them, because once you've paid for them once, especially in the main menu over here in the number one menu, once you've paid for them once, you can get them anytime you like. See, I can buy a bunch in here. But on some of my saves, I may have already bought it. Like, see, for instance, this movement, movement tracker. I have this on another save. I've already purchased it. So it now becomes available on all of my saves. So you only need to purchase it one time each character. So if you have several saves, you can do the Nexus Weekend Anomaly mission every single for every single character and pick up that extra Quicksilver for all your characters, and each character can buy one item from here and it becomes available to all of them. Yeah. Let that sink in for just a minute. Really cool. So the expedition rewards will always be available as long as you've done the expedition. For instance, if I go to the right here and I go to Expedition 1, you see my Atlas Fireworks are still available even though this, this was done years ago. And I've collected everything else in that expedition already. Okay. So that gives you the idea. Now, the last item on there you'll notice was Twitch drops. Obviously, we're not on Twitch right now. But occasionally, they will do twice a year. Usually the upcoming in February that's coming up right now. And the one in August. Twice a year, they do Twitch drops. And when those occur, you watch your favorite Twitch um, streamer. Uh, who has drops enabled. And usually starting at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Through at least 12, you have to go at least 3 hours per stream, you will get all the items that have been made available on the Twitch stream drops. And those items become available once you've claimed them in your Twitch dreams, pardon me, I'm not saying it right, on your Twitch stream drops page. Once you've claimed them, they will become available here, usually rather quickly. Usually the next time you load up your game, you'll find them sitting in here. And you'll see I haven't claimed all of them. I can get sub celebratory fireworks packs. I can claim five of those. I haven't claimed any yet. Uh, I can get posters and grass, reality glitch trails, things like that that are available to this character that I may have gotten on others. And they are all available, including ships that they have given out. Now, once you claim the ship on this particular save, if you sell it or get rid of it, it never becomes available to you again. So keep that in mind. You can get starship trails which I'm surprised I don't have on this one. I love the Temporal Starship Trail. Um, other eggs and companions, they give a lot of things out, including multi-tools. So if you're really looking for a nice multi-tool, they give usually some A-class multi-tools out to folks on these runs. Very rarely is it S-class. It's usually all A-class ships. The only S-class that I'm available, that they only two S-class ships that, that they have given out, is the Golden Vector, which they gave on the first expedition. And on one of the other expeditions, they gave out the, um, 
I can't think of the name of the ship, and I'm going to go ahead and look at it right now. Unprepared. My apologies. It is the Utopia Speeder. The Utopia Speeder is also an S-Class ship, so as I pull that one in, you'll see I didn't have to upgrade it. It was automatically an S-Class ship. So, that gives you a rough idea. So, those are the only two ships that I'm ever aware of that they've ever given out that were S-Class. They're usually A-Class. Rarely are they B-Class. They're usually A-Class at the very least. You will have to upgrade them on your own. So those Twitch rewards, how long do they stay in the store? Same thing, forever. You can gather these things up forever. If you've already gathered them, um, you'll see you even got some nice of these nice uh, alien multi-tools, which are really cool. If you've already gathered them at some point, they just become unavailable to you on this save. And you'll see I've also got the armored shoulder pads and boots and stuff like that. I don't need to gather them. I've picked them up through the main store at one point or another. So... It's a good idea to go ahead and check these things out. I've got a lot of Twitch drops that you can see in here. Um, uh, some I've already picked up, some I have not. I picked this up on several occasions on some of my other saves. Really nice ship. But anyway, that gives you a rough idea of what goes on in the Quicksilver store. Um, any cosmetic items that you get for your person, as you are probably, you will learn going through the main playthrough, you can uh, develop your own appearance modifier like this one here. And you can go in there and you can adjust your appearance as well. And you can change anything about yourself, and including getting those items that you really um, wanted. I currently have construct hands on my character here, and I can change it. I can put some rust on there too and make it look a little used if I want. Things like that. And that's it. So that becomes that. If you get eggs from your companions, you can put them in the egg sequencer and add items to those eggs in order to make the the uh, whatever spawns from those eggs larger, smaller, faster, more um, more uh, threatening, uh, if you will. They give them the ability to be uh, more agile. Sometimes you can make them more aggressive, which means they'll attack other creatures on the planets for no reason whatsoever. Um, so that may not be the best idea in the world, um, especially if they will attack a sentinel because they won't fight with you. They'll just <clears throat> fight until they feel like they don't feel like fighting anymore. They do have their own personalities after all. So that, my folk, my friends, is the um, whole idea behind Quicksilver and what it can do for you. Again, a lot of those things are cosmetic, but a few are not. Those figurines are very handy to put on your ship, and they can really affect things. Um, and the, dro the drops you get from the Twitch drops are most of them very, very handy items that you can use in-game. Ships that you can get, multi-tools that you can get, things along those lines, companion eggs. But everything else is going to be cosmetic. So, again, they will always be available in the Twitch store, uh, pardon me, in the Quicksilver store. Every item that you've ever, ever gathered is going to always be available to you and will never leave. And again, it'll be available once you purchase it on one save. Once again, it's available on every save that you have in No Man's Sky. So that's a really nice bonus, if you will. Well, that is the end of this episode. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate you being here today. If you like this video or you have any questions definitely if you like the video hit the like icon of course if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do so got a lot of videos out there including a lot of beginners style videos how to play no man's sky um, on top of that if you have questions please leave them in the comments and i will be glad to get back to you i always do whoa wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute i forgot one very important thing and i don't believe i missed this i'm so sorry the Void Egg. Of course, the Void Egg. The one thing that costs so much in this particular Quicksilver vendor, 3200 Quicksilver is what this costs to get a Void Egg. Well, what's a Void Egg? A Void Egg gets you something very special. It takes five days for it to fully mature and to go through the quest. What you do is you purchase one of those, you go into hyperspace for a little bit, and you end up starting a quest line that gets you a special ship. Not this ship. No, but this ship, instead, you get yourself a living ship. And that is probably the most expensive item that you can get in the Quicksilver store. And about the only thing that's really worth your time to do so. The rest of the stuff is cosmetic, but this is an actual ship that you can fly. And it has a special type of propulsion system, and everything about it is completely different from any other ship you'll ever 
you'll ever own. So, yeah, we're out all about that. I am so sorry, folks. Okay, back to the regular stream. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of comments so far, and I've always gotten back to every one of them, as I can. Just keep your comments clean. If they're snarky, if they're rude, likely I won't be replying, of course. But... And for the most part, I will always reply to just about everybody. So again, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you guys in the next submissions and in any other videos that come out after this. Take care, everybody.